In this video, I want to discuss some concepts to do with integral calculus, also known as integration. Okay, so in the advanced XY graphs video, part two, we saw that we could draw uh, trapeziums under a curve and work out the individual areas of those trapeziums. We then saw that we could work out the cumulative area and then plot the function and work out um, an equation for that line. But what if we have uh, an equation and a function and we want to work out the area under the curve without having to go to the trouble of working out the areas of all those trapeziums and we want to also be a bit more accurate. So what we can use is we can use integration. So let's take this example here. We've got a function, uh, a cubic function, because we've got x cubed as the highest power term and we want the area between x equals 0 and x equals 3. So we want this area between uh, the between 0 shown here and between 3 where's the dashed line. Now conceptually what we're trying to do is work out this area by filling this area in with lots of narrow strips. So if we fill this in with lots of narrow strips and work out the area of each strip then we can work out the area under the curve between 0 and 3. The height of each strip is given by the function the width of each strip is going to be called dx, so we're defining this term dx as being the width of each strip. And if we make the width of each strip really, really narrow, um, maybe infinitely narrow, and add up all of those strips, we'll get the total area. So total area is the height given by this function times by the width dx. And we add them all up to get the total area. So we can write this down as being total area equals sum of all the strips from 0 to 3 for that, that function times dx. Another way of writing it is that we could just sort of write an s for the sum. So we're saying we're sum, summing up all the strips for this function times by dx. So that's all the areas of those little strips added up. And we're going from 0 to 3. So it's all the little narrow strips from 0 to 3. So this is just conceptually thinking about what we need to do. Now, if we stretch out this S, so we've got this S here that's a bit stretched out, and we have still put in the 0 to 3 that we want to sum up all the strips from there to there, then we have the function times dx for the area, and if we just give this its technical name, it's an integral. And so this is what you will see written down when you think about integration, that it's this stretched out S from 0 to 3 for the function with respect to dx. And this is... When people first started out thinking about integration, they thought about it as being very narrow strips um, bit multiplied by dx to get the area and then summing them all up. Now we just say we're integrating from 0 to 3 for this function with respect to x, so we have the dx there. So that's the concept of what we're trying to do. In order to actually calculate a number for this area, we need to use calculus. And we saw in the advanced xy graph video part 2 that if we have y equals x to the n, the integral is x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And in fact, there's a whole range of different integrals that we can look up in a table for different functions. So for example, if we have a as a constant, the integral is just ax. And then we have ones for all these other functions as well. Okay, so back to our function that we're interested in with this example. Um, what we need to do, first step, is to work out the integral function and for this one we had x to the 3 so now we go to x to the 4 and divide by 4 and we still keep this 0 0.06 as well. Then we can do this for the x squared term it goes to a cube and divide by 3. The x term goes to an x squared and the 0 0.4 the constant term here becomes 0 0.4x. We then draw some square brackets around this and put 0 to 3 to remind us that we're going from 0 to 3. And we can simplify this by multiplying the numbers that were there or dividing by the numbers that were there. And it just simplifies the function. Step 2 then is to evaluate this function at x equals 0 and x equals 3. So to start with we do it at x equals 3 and we put the value of 3 in instead of x in all these places. We then take away this function evaluated when x equals 0. So you'll notice now that x has been replaced with 0. So when we work this out, we get 11.055. And that's the area between x equals 0 and x equals 3 
for this particular function. What if we wanted to generalize this a little bit more? Uh, we could integrate between 0 and x, any value x that we're interested in. So we follow the same process, same procedure, to integrate all of this. But now, in step 2, we just leave the value of x in for this first term. We then subtract the equation, the function, evaluated at x equals 0. This just happens to work out to 0 in this case. So overall, the integral is shown here. And this gives us the area between 0 and any value x for the function that we are interested in. Let's take the example of cos x. We can apply the same logic and the same procedure. What's the area between x equals 0 and x under this curve? Well, again, we can use calculus. And if we integrate cos x, we get sin x. So the first step to integrate this just changes the cos x to sin x. And again, remember, we want to go from 0 to x. Now, if we evaluate this at sin x, we just leave the x in. And then if we need to evaluate it at sin 0, sin 0 is just 0. So overall, the integral for cos x between 0 and x is sin x. Now, if we look at this example where we've got y equals sin x, uh, this is slightly different this time. Let's see, there's something extra that we need to make note of. So it's the same procedure, same idea. If we integrate sine x, we get minus cos x. So we've looked that up in a table, we know that. So we can make this step by step. Same procedure as before. And again, we evaluate this where we leave x in and then we take away cos x. Uh, take away minus cos x. So cos of 0 is 1. So effectively what we're doing is minus cos x minus minus 1. So that becomes plus 1. So we get minus cos x plus 1. And we get this constant as a result of integrating. So sometimes this happens with functions. Sometimes if you evaluate a function, it's just 0. So you don't get the constant. But this is the thing that's a little bit more interesting this time, that we've actually got this constant appearing. And we can rearrange this. And it's the same as saying the integral is 1 minus cos x. So if we integrate sine x between 0 and x, this is the function. So that's been a video discussing some concepts in integral calculus, also known as integration.